he didn't let me weld, straight up. <laughs> I went and got my hood. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm gonna make that weld. He said, I didn't know you was a welder. I said, well, I'm fixing to show you. So when I was in high school, uh, I didn't have any interest in welding. I didn't know any welders. I didn't, uh, nobody in my family welded. And uh, I just didn't know much about it. So uh, it wasn't really on my radar. It was never an option that I considered for even a career. Uh, what ended up happening was uh, I was, I think, a sophomore. And then, you know, they came around at the end of the year for us to sign up for our classes. And I signed up for auto shop. So uh, auto shop was full and they just stuck me in a welding class, ag welding. And I was like, what? You know, all right, whatever, I guess. So I go in there, I'd never been around welding before. I didn't know anything about it. And I really didn't have any interest in it at all. So I go in there and like the first couple weeks of class, I'm just kind of like slacking off, not really participating, but it gets to the point and be like, everybody has to come over here and weld. So I, I get up there and I'm like, okay. And it's just the same as everybody else whenever you first start. What's up, man? Doing good. It's the same as everybody else whenever they first start. You know, I fired up. I had no clue what I was looking at. I didn't know uh, what the puddle was supposed to look like. I didn't know what I was watching for. But it just seemed kind of fun, you know? So I did it again. And uh, it got a little bit better. And I did it again. It got a little bit better. And then I started to realize, it's like, you know, I kind of like this. So, uh, you know, instead of slacking off, I actually started paying attention class. And I would practice and practice and practice and practice. And I started getting pretty good at it. So I was like, all right. And, uh, you know, towards the end of the year, it comes around and uh, my teacher comes to me. He said, are you interested in going to a competition? So I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So that's whenever I had my first taste of that, whenever I was a junior. And uh, I went to that competition. I did not do well, uh, you know, because I was still new to everything. So. I didn't do so hot that next time, but I still liked welding. So the next year, in my high school, we had three different welding classes. We had an ag welding class, and then we had our advanced welding classes. And uh, my instructor in there is actually one of my local brothers here, local 452. So uh, I got in his class, and I signed up for both of them. And uh, the second class was like your TIG and MIG class, and uh, the first class is uh, stick and like torch cutting. So the second class, you know, you've had to take the first year before you can take it. So whenever I showed up later in the day for his second class, he's like, you're not supposed to be in here. I was like, well, why not? He's like, you have to have the first class. So I talked to him, I'm like, listen, dude, I think this is what I want to do for a living. So if there's any way possible, can I please get in this class? So I went and talked to my counselor. They pulled some strings, ended up getting to take both of those classes. So I was going to welding class, you know, for four hours a day whenever I was a senior. So I took full advantage of that and I welded and welded and welded and welded and welded. Same thing, the end of the year comes around and uh, we get to go to some competitions and I was fortunate enough to come in first place in the state in one of them and that's where I got my scholarship to go to KWI. At the time it was a new school, it actually didn't even exist yet, it was more like an idea. And uh, so, but I was sold on it, they, you know, they told me I'd have a scholarship so I actually got a phone call really early in the morning. Ashley called me and woke me up and he said, you won. And I was just like, am I dreaming? You know, I was pretty tickled. And uh, so that's what started that, man. Uh, I was pretty dead set on it after that. I got my scholarship and uh, I ended up getting a grant too. So I didn't have to pay hardly anything to go to school. So I was in really good shape from the start, but it was a lot of hard work to get there, man. You know, uh, I'm not gonna say I was a natural at welding, uh, I think I struggled just as much as everybody else did, but I had like a desire to do it. Uh, maybe what's helped me a little bit uh, learning to weld is I was always a little bit like more artistic, I guess you could say. Like I always like to draw. I've always been interested in music, playing guitar. I played guitar my whole life. So, you know, I had that hand-eye coordination, I suppose. But, uh, you know, welding is an art on its own. So I just kind of fell into it and fell in love with it. And, uh, I'm still in love with it, man. You know, I love learning about welding. I love trying new things. I love teaching welding. So I think it was the right choice, man. I think it was a solid career move. I didn't even know it paid well at the time. So that was a huge plus, but 
I just love it, man. I don't think uh, I don't think I would do anything different. I think I, if I had to go back, I'd do exactly what I did. It just worked out really good. I'm pretty happy with the choices I made. I started uh, I started KWI in the fall of 2015. You know, the year I graduated, and uh, it was a brand new school at the time, and uh, we were part of the first class that ever came through there, and uh, I was just really really impressed with how much thought they'd put into like their curriculum and uh, what all they had available for us to do. Everything was perfect, man. Uh, you know, we started out, I was, uh, I really liked how you could go at your own pace and uh, that was really beneficial to me because there were some things that I was already pretty good at and uh, I'd worked for Caterpillar whenever, that was my first welding job. I worked for Caterpillar whenever I was in high school, so I did plenty of like arc gouging and stick welding and uh, plenty of flux core welding. So those types of things, whenever I was in school, I just kind of breezed through them. I'd been doing it the whole time. But like once we got the TIG, I had basically no experience with that. So that's what I really wanted to focus on. And being able to move at my own pace really helped me get the time that I needed. Plus, we had some like fantastic instructors. Uh, yeah, everybody helped me really good, man. I could I could rattle off all the names, uh, you know, Ryan Lampkin, Andrew Hiltebrand, uh, Garrett Maddox, Ashley, all those guys. Jordan, uh, they helped me tremendously. They're top-notch hands, and that's the good thing about KWI is their instructors that they keep in there are top-notch. So you're just going to be learning from the best the whole time. Like I told Keegan a while ago, I was like, I'm fortunate because I got to go to, you know, one of the Ivy League welding schools. It's like the Harvard of welding schools. It's perfect. And uh, whenever I was there, I made a lot of really good friends. Uh, like I said, you know, you have the way that the school operates is, you know, however hard you want to work, you know, you can. If, if you want to stay late, you can. Uh, it's just how much effort, you know, you're willing to put into it. You know they'll let, they'll just keep throwing metal and throwing welding rods at you till you get it. And like I said, top notch instruction, all the time you need. It's I mean it's the perfect environment to learn how to weld. Plus everything else that they offer, you know all the other certifications, is just like icing on the cake, man. Because when you roll out of there, you are so much better set up than anybody else. I mean I can't think of any other welding school that does that. And. Uh, all the certs and they've just added on to that since I've been there. Like I said, I graduated almost eight years ago and now it's like tenfold what it was whenever I was there. And I was impressed with what I had, but the guys that are rolling out of there now are just so set up for success. It's, it's just, it's really nice to be able to have that, you know, starting out because whenever you first get out of school, you know, you're not going to be the best welder ever and you're not going to know everything, but, you're going to be a lot better off than most people because you've got to learn, you know, about rigging. You've got, you know, your search on that. You've got all these different welding search from structural to pipe. They offer all kinds of alloys, downhill, just anything you can imagine. So it, having that kind of experience coming out of school is just, I mean, you're way above everybody else around you. So it's a great thing, man. Uh, like I said, I just can't think of any other school that does anything like that. Uh, they put so much time and thought and effort into making the school as good as they possibly can, and it shows, man. It shows with the people that come out of there. Like, the guys that come out of KWI are top-notch hands. I've had several of them in my class, KWI graduates, and they're always, you know, they're just, they just smoke everybody else, man. You know, it's quality instruction that you get there. It's, I mean, I, it's the best in the world, probably. So... Those guys that come out of there, they're they're automatically set up for success. It's how much work you want to put into it. You know, if you're willing to go in there and work hard and be disciplined and listen, then you're going to be a good hand when you come out of there. End of story. Whenever I was in school, uh, I think it's it's a six month program, and like I said, I was able to move at my own pace. So I ended up graduating in around five months. Uh, I had a job lined up uh, whenever I graduated. I think I graduated, I'm pretty sure I graduated on a Friday and Monday morning I was hiring in at a power plant in Florida. <laughs> so I literally left from school and drove straight to Florida, got a motel, and then Monday morning I was, you know, at the front gate of the plant badging in and uh, hiring in on my first job. So it was pretty quick uh, turnaround from going from school to work. So I worked there for probably, I don't know, two and a half months down there, I think. 
And after that, I just started hitting the road, hitting all these different shutdowns and stuff. And I wasn't real particular about like where I was going. I was more uh, after experience. So just as many jobs as I could get under my belt. And uh, the first, uh, like I said, I went to, that first job was at a power plant. I think my next job might've been at a paper mill then a few more power plants. I've worked at a lot of different power plants up and down the Ohio River. Uh, I've been everywhere. But uh, yeah, I traveled and I ran the road for several years and uh, I was on a job in Northern Kentucky back in 20, 2017, I think, 2017. I was working with Blake. He was my tube welding partner. We were up in uh, Rabbit Hash and uh, Ashley called us and uh, asked us if we wanted to teach. and. We'd been pulling like 612s, 712s for a couple months at that point, and uh, we'd made plenty of money, but we were also very tired. So, you know, a job teaching 40 hours a week sounded fantastic. So we both agreed. Uh, I think I started teaching around June that year, and uh, I loved it, dude. I loved it. Uh, I don't know, man. I just, I like welding, so somebody that's going to pay me to talk about welding all day to people, you know what I mean? That's like perfect for me so I fell right into it I loved it right from the get-go and uh, it's really cool I enjoy teaching so much because like seeing some seeing the satisfaction on somebody's face after they've finally got the hang of something that they've been struggling with or you know something finally clicks for them it's just I don't know that's satisfaction for me just seeing you know them be happy about it because I was there too man I struggle too, just like everybody else. I know what that feeling feels like. So whenever I get to see my guys, you know, I get to see their eyes light up or they're all excited because they ran a really nice wheel and they want me to come look at it. I'm excited too, you know what I mean? I'm just as invested in them as they are in themselves. So I, I immediately fell in love with teaching. Uh, I was there uh, probably throughout the summer, I, maybe about a month and a half, I think. I was about to go on another job it was actually where you were at down there on that oil rig. I had uh, some weld tests lined up down in Louisiana. I was about two weeks away from flying down there and uh, some uh, UA reps came in to tour the school. One of them happened to be uh, Robbie Johnson, our former business manager. Uh, and he recognized me. I'd actually went to this hall and took a couple welding tests earlier that year. And uh, at the time it was just, I think work was a little slow and they just weren't taking very many people in. So. Uh, uh, I just kind of got lost in the mix of it, but he remembered me because whenever I came in here, uh, I was trying to show out, man. You know what I mean? I, I knew I had to set myself apart from everybody else. So I came in here, I had to take two welding tests and I'm, let's see, I don't remember how long it took me, but I was done pretty quick and which I've been welding the entire time anyway. I've been traveling for constantly for years. So whenever I came in here I smoked these two welding tests out and I think all the other guys that were in here were still working on their first welding tests and I had two done so you know people remember stuff like that so they both shot good everything was all good uh, when he came to tour the school he immediately remembered me he came straight to me he was like what are you doing and I was like I'm teaching man he's like what happened to you I was like I've just been working the whole time I was like, I've just been waiting to hear from you all so uh he offered me a job and he's like, we can bring you in as a provisional journeyman. Cause like I said, at the time I've been traveling and working, you know, I had some experience under my belt at that point. He said, if, uh, if you come in and you show us that your journeyman level, you know, you get like a six month grace period or whatever, you show us that you're a journeyman level welder, then after six months, you'll be a full journeyman. I was like, okay, that sounds like, you know, fair plan. So, I called the guy in Louisiana and told him I wasn't going to come and I ended up uh, taking a job here. So uh, I, they sent me out to Chicago for my first job and uh, <laughs> I get up there and uh, I didn't know what to expect. It's my first union job. Turns out they're not that much different than non-union jobs. Uh, it's the same work, so it's just different people. Uh, but I hire in on this job and uh, this job was a little strange. They didn't have a gate test they went by your UA certs. So I hire in, I'm 21 years old at the time, and uh, I get up there in Chicago, and uh, my foreman's got his clipboard, and he's going over, you know, it's the first day, he's seeing everybody that's in his crew. He gets to my name, and it says welder next to it. And uh, <laughs> he was like, you're a welder? 
I was like, yeah, yeah. He's like, how old are you? I was like, 21. He's like, mm, I don't know about all that. I was like, what do you mean you don't know about all that? He's like, dude, this is a 100% x-ray job. He said, uh, we can't just let anybody make these welds. I was like, well, I'm not just anybody, man. I'll be okay. I've been on 100% x-ray jobs before. He's like, mm, I just don't know about it, man. So he didn't let me weld straight up. <laughs> and uh, I was like, okay. So for two weeks, I was changing out valves and, you know, all that crappy work that I just didn't want to do. Well, one day it got to the point where uh, we had to fit up, uh, I think it was just like a little two inch flange or something, something easy, a little two inch weld neck flange. And he's like, y'all run the lead up here, the Oregon hose, the extension cords, clean the pipe, get the pipe ready to fit up. And I'll send Dustin up here after a while to make that weld. And I was like, I was thinking in my head and I was really aggravated at this point. I was fully capable of making these welds. So I was sitting there thinking, if I'm running lead, if I'm running Oregon hose, I'm making that weld. So the guy I was working with, we got everything run. I went and got my hood. He said, what are you doing? I said, I'm gonna make that weld. He said, I didn't know you was a welder. I said, well, I'm fixing to show you. So I went completely out of my way to make that the best looking weld I possibly could. So when my foreman comes up there, he's like, oh, has Dustin been up here already? I was like, I ain't seen him. He said, what do you mean you ain't seen him? And uh, I was like, I ain't seen him. And he's like, well, who made that weld? I, said, I did, because I'm a welder. And uh, he looked at it and I knew there was nothing wrong with it. So I just sit back and I just let him do all the luck and he wanted, and he finally says, all right, all right, fair enough. He said, you think you can handle it? I was like, well, what do you think? He said, well, I got a big heavy wall weld that you can do tomorrow if you really want to show me what you got. Okay, I'll do it. He's like, but I'm gonna tell you. He said, don't you be up there putting big hillbilly ass weaves on there. I was like, dude, I'm from Eastern Kentucky. Hillbilly weaves are kind of my thing. So I went up there the next day and I fired up on that. Uh, it was actually me and the other guy, Dustin. I fired up on that weld. It was, uh, we were welding pretty close to each other. It was, uh, it was a big heavy, two big heavy weld joints. And uh, I think I finished four hours before he did, purely out of spite because they, were, they weren't letting me weld. So I was doing my best to show out. So I was done four hours before the other dude. And I just cut out of there. Weld shot good, everything was good. So at that point, you know, he's like, all right, well, I guess you can weld. So I just continued on and uh, ended up, I think out of 150 something guys, I was one of the five guys on that job that walked away without a bad shot. So, you know, he ended up coming up to me later on and apologizing and shaking my hand. And uh, it's just, it was just nice for that like confirmation to be like, I told you, man, you know, you just had to give me a chance. But that was my first job, so. Like I said, being uh, one of the five guys that didn't have a bad shot, you know, that was that was pretty good. So they sent me out uh, on another job up in Lima. You remember that one? I met you at that hotel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that terrible hotel. Oh, oh it was the worst. Uh, but yeah, I, I went up there and I worked for probably three or four months and uh, did really good up there. I was, uh, I was one of the guys that they trusted the most on the crew. Uh, I was always in tight spots making welds and stuff, and uh, I was able to fit the pipe and rig everything, you know, and uh, they were just, I think they were just impressed by like somebody that was that young that was able to do, you know, that type of work. But a lot of it goes to what, you know, I was already trained in that, you know, from the get-go at school. I knew how to do all that stuff already. So it wasn't, you know, I just made a really good showing, and then uh, I come back home and, uh, I called my BA, I'm like, I'm laid off. I was like, I need another job. He's like, okay. He said, well, there's a job in uh, Versailles, Four Roses Distillery. He said, uh, it's four tens or five eights, or it's 40 hours a week. He's like, are you interested? And I was thinking, I was like, no, not really. You know, I was used to running the road. You know, I was used to making pretty good money and I just wasn't ready to just settle down and be home yet. I had a kid on the way and I was just trying to save up as much money as possible. So I, I told him no. And he's like, well, they really need a guy out there. And I was like, well, not the one. I don't know what to tell you. So, <laughs> and uh, he uh, he called me back the next day, and he asked me. He said, when I answered the phone, I figured he's calling me about that same job. He's like, did you change your mind? But no. When I answered the phone, he asked me. He said, can you weld Hastelloy? And I was like, uh, they have Hastelloy Four Roses. What's that doing? He's like, no. He said the Army Depot needs a welder. So I was like, okay. 
uh, I knew that was a specialty company out there doing the work, so they paid over scale. I was, I was like, okay, all right. I've never worked for a specialty company before, but I'm all about challenges. So I took, a, I took the call. I came out here, I took my weld test, passed both of them. Uh, I hire up, I hire in out there, and uh, <laughs> the first thing I had to weld <laughs> was three quarter inch Schedule 40 stainless, 100% x-ray. And uh, I'd never welded anything that small and that thin before. And uh, it had a learning curve, man, it did. But uh, I paid it, you know, I did what I've always done. I paid attention to the guys that knew what they were doing. I was trying to be like a sponge and absorb everything I could. But at the same time, I had to figure it out really quick. So I ended up, uh, I think the first day I was there, I might've practiced a, a couple times and I just went ahead and made a weld. I was thinking, you know, like they're not gonna let me practice for weeks trying to figure this out. I have to be able to make the weld. So if I can't make it right now, then this isn't the job for me. So I went ahead and we fit up a joint and uh, I made the weld and it turned out really nice, believe it or not. And uh, I was impressed with myself and uh, you know my foreman and my QC, they were both impressed. And uh, I was like, I don't know how long I can keep this up, but you know, at least I've got a job for a little bit longer. Uh, that was my first weld. My second weld was inside the reactor and uh, it probably should have been a mirror weld. It was extremely difficult, but it shot good too. So after a while, I just kept getting welds and welds and welds. I just kept making welds and they were all shooting good. So uh, I was getting better the whole time too. And uh, ended up, I think that job, whenever they first called me, they said it was gonna be about four months and uh, it was five years back in uh, early November that I've been out there. So I've been over, I've been out there for a little over five years now. So the main thing is, you know, if you're not the best welder, if you're not able to keep up with everybody yet, there's a few other things you can do to make yourself valuable. You know, show up for work every day, show up on time, be respectful, you know, just do simple stuff like that. Just be a good person to be around, you know, and they'll keep you around, you know, if. If you can't weld the best, then just work hard. Do whatever you can, just work hard. And uh, the welding will come with time. You'll get better all the time, but you just have to make yourself valuable in other ways. So that's what I was trying to do. I was just trying to work as hard as I could, show up on time, just try to make myself look like the best employee possible. And it paid off, man, because now I've been home for five years straight, the exact same job. I've got to watch my little girl grow up. She's never had to see me you know, travel or anything yet. And, I've made all kinds of money and uh, I've got a lot of experience. It's been a really good job. So yeah, I'm out there and uh, I'm making all these welds all the time. I'm getting some good experience. Uh, the depot, you know, I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. It's a really strange job and I'll never work at one like it again. So what my job, what I do is we've built a plant to destroy chemical weapons. So the U.S. had a giant stockpile of sarin nerve gas, VX nerve gas, and mustard gas, and probably a few others. But those were the three that we had in Richmond. So the whole thing it was they can't transport this stuff on the road, so they had to build an entire plant on the actual footprint of the military base. So that's where I work, and uh, my job was part of building that plant. And... Uh, all the different chemical processes that are involved out there diluting the nerve gas down and stuff you know it it's a lot of strong you know acids and caustics and all these other types of chemicals get mixed with it so the piping a lot of the time is made of some exotic alloys i never uh, i think i'd weld a little inconel uh, at a power plant and i think i'd weld a little 347 but as far as exotics i didn't have a whole lot of experience so now that i've been out there i've welded on all kinds of stuff, man. I've welded on Inconel, Inkaloy, Hastaloy, uh, Alloy 20, lots of chrome. Uh, I did some titanium out there. Uh, there's a 330 stainless, which is high temp stainless, and it welds really strange. But I've just got to weld on all kinds of different stuff, and uh, I've got just a whole plethora of you know experience and knowledge out of it now, and I'm grateful for that. Not many people will ever get to do that their entire career, and I've got to do it all before I turn 30. So anyway, I've been out there, you know, consistently making x-ray welds, you know, day in, day out, all the time, you know, doing a good job. And uh, I get a phone call one day from my BA, and uh, 
he's like, hey, man, uh, he said, I was just wanting to ask you, he said, uh, he said, our welding instructor is going to have to quit because he's got more uh, responsibilities at his job now. He took a foreman position, and he's just not going to be able to teach anymore. He's like, I know you taught at KWI, and we've been really impressed with the guys that have come out of that school. He said, is there any way you would be interested in teaching our welding program? I was like, yeah, dude, I'll do it for a bologna sandwich. You know what I mean? I was so tickled that he asked because I just love to teach, man. So... I, I came out here and uh, how old was I when I started? I've been doing this for three years, so about 20, 23, 24, I think, whenever I started teaching. So still pretty young. And uh, I came in here and I think I was actually younger than a lot of the guys in my class. So I didn't know what to think about that, you know. Uh, I didn't know what they would think, you know, with me being a younger guy. But, you know, at the same time, you know, you treat them with respect and you'll get respect back. So after a minute, you know, they realized that I knew what I was talking about and uh, I could prove it, you know, I could I could run, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk, I suppose you could say, but uh, you know, eventually they did earn my respect or I earned their respect and they, and they listened to me. And uh, you can, like I said, you could go out there right now and uh, ask any of those guys, you know, just to give honest, statement about me it wouldn't bother me a bit and i don't think any of them would say anything bad i treat everybody good man and uh you know i just a lot of these guys go through a five-year apprenticeship and they go through classes the whole time so when they get to my class you know i really try to make that enjoyable for them i try to make it a good environment you know for them to learn in it's all hands-on for the most part i don't do paperwork in my class you know i just want them in there burning rods playing with fire all day you know that's how you learn how to weld so i turn them loose in the booth and i'll go in there and i'll help them and uh, i'll show them stuff like what we did a while ago i'll try to get guys together you know and have a lesson and stuff and i find that it works really good and uh, i know for a fact that I've turned a lot of guys out of my class who are slick welders now. And I'm not saying I was solely responsible for that. I'm just saying I, I helped play a part in their progression. And I, and I like to think that, you know, uh, I did, you know, a little bit to help them. But I know a lot of those guys still, you know, thank me all the time whenever they see me for helping them. And uh, I got to work with these guys for the rest of my life. They're my local brothers. They're all the same age as me for the most part, uh, pretty close anyway. So I'm going to be working with them until I retire. So my line of thinking is, you know, if I treat them good and I do a good job teaching them, then I'm not going to have any problems later on down the road with them. And uh, I don't want to be turning guys out who are just like laying ugly welds and people be like, well, who taught you how to weld? And be like, Austin did, you know, then I get a bad name. So I just, I take it really serious, man, because this is their livelihood this is their career and you know it's important so i i put i invest a lot of my time and effort in teaching these guys and like i said i take it as serious as i possibly can because it is uh it's their it's their life man it's important this is what's going to feed their family this is what's going to build their retirement this is what's going to you know keep food on the table for them so the skills that they build in my class or what's going to set them up for success later on in life. So I do my best to try to teach them the way I would have wanted to be taught. There's a lot of things that I had to figure out on my own, you know, just from being out welding, you know. So I try to show them those little shortcuts and stuff to really help speed up the learning process. And uh, I like to think I'm pretty good at explaining things and uh, simplifying them down to where everybody can understand. But I'm getting better at that all the time too. Uh, believe it or not, Every year, the UA instructors get to go for classes uh, for a week up in Michigan in Ann Arbor, and we actually get to take classes on how to teach. So they, uh, the UA puts a lot of time and effort into, you know, bettering their instructors because the better quality instructors you have, the better your apprenticeship program is, the better hands you're going to turn out. So we go up there once a year, and I get to learn all kinds of different stuff about, you know, teaching techniques and everything else and it's helped me a whole lot being able to communicate clearly to these guys and you know get through to them and help them understand a lot of the concepts I'm describing. Welding's hard to learn and uh, whatever I can do to make it easier I'm going to. If it was easy then everybody would do it you know it pays awesome so the only thing that's stopping people from doing it is 
you know, it's difficult. It's difficult to learn, but that is why it pays good because it's hard to do. But really, the main thing is if you want to learn how to do it, you just have to, you have to be willing to put the work in. And uh, like I said, remain disciplined. It's not always going to be easy. It's going to be tough. There's going to be things that you just absolutely hate to do. You're going to be getting burned up, catch on fire, everything else, and you just have to deal with it because that's part of the learning process. But if you can stay disciplined, stay committed, and keep your head down and keep working, it'll it'll come, man. And uh, whatever is worth having is worth working for, in my opinion. Some advice that I would give guys, uh, you know, getting into welding, uh, I think it's really important to, like I said, for one, you know, welding pays really well. So I can give some examples of what happens, uh, happens all the time, as a matter of fact. So you get, you get your first welding job, okay? And uh, you get your first paycheck and it's a fat one. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't think I was ever gonna make this much money. Well, the next week comes, you get another fat check and then another fat check. And it starts adding up and you're like, I'm rich. Like I'm this, I've made it, I'm loaded. So, you know, you get used to making that money, but maybe that job only lasts like five weeks. And you know, you made quite a bit of money, but now how long is it gonna be for the next job? So a lot of times what happens, and I've seen it happen many times. So guys will get used to making this type of money, which is good, but they don't spend it really wisely. And what ends up happening is these guys end up becoming slaves to the job. So I learned that early on that you know it disappears pretty quick, and if you're not making the right decisions, what you know what you'll end up doing is just having to stay gone all the time. So, your family, your friends, the stuff that you like to do, that just becomes non-existent. You're just working constantly. You know, yeah, I like my job, but I don't want to do it seven days a week, 365 days a year. I have other things that I like to do much better. So, you know, think about that for a second. So. Imagine, and this is completely true, this happens all the time. So imagine this, you know, you've bought a big truck, bought a big camper, you've got a nice bass boat, which you're not gonna to get to use by the way, and you bought all this stuff and you have payments, you know, bills just coming in constantly. And you have to pay for this stuff and you have to travel to do it. So you end up working all the time. Well, say you have a wife, you know, mama's gonna get lonely with you being gone all the time. And it's just part of life. That's being human. She's going to get lonely. So it, it might be a little easier for her to, you know, make some bad decisions while you're gone. And if that ends up happening, then guess what? You know, here you are left empty handed. You're going to have to pay for a divorce now. And uh, now you're going to have to pay for some child support too. So all those bills that you had just got worse. Now you are absolutely a slave to the job. You don't have an option to get out anymore. And if you just took the time a little early on to spend your money a little more wisely, you could have been home. So like you, for example, you work like what, half the year? Yeah. You ride dirt bikes all yeah. the time. So yeah, I, I like riding dirt bikes too. I like doing all kinds of, I like hunting. I like playing guitar with my buddies. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that I want to do that's not welding. So I've tried to make it to where I'm able to stay home if I want to, you know, I don't have like a big, you know, 3,500 square foot house on a 120 acre ranch or something. I have what I need. I have a nice house out in the middle of the woods. It's nice and quiet and I'm very content with what I have. Uh, I bought a Gibson Les Paul, which was like my bucket list. That's all I ever wanted since I was a kid was a real Gibson Les Paul. So once I bought that thing, I pretty much felt like I peaked. I haven't really wanted to buy anything since then. and. Uh, you know, I, I guess maybe I'm just simple, but being simple like that has actually been extremely beneficial to me because I've not had to work as hard as other people. I know guys that have no choice whatsoever but to be gone all the time. I've seen guys on the job, and uh, I'm not gonna say this dude's name because uh, I don't remember it actually. But anyway, dude, uh, whenever I was up in Lima, he was 72 years old. He was. Uh, he was from, I don't remember where he's from, Tennessee maybe? I don't know. 72 years old on the job, still working. And uh, you know, that's not good, man. If, if I'm 72, the last thing I wanna be doing is welding. I mean, at that point, probably won't even be able to see that good. I'm gonna be struggling. But you know, 
but people are put in situations like that. If you go through three or four divorces and then all of a sudden you don't have a retirement, what are you gonna do? You just gotta keep working. Well, this guy was 72 then, it's been five years. My buddy texted me the other day, he said, you'll never believe who I'm working with. Same dude. He's still traveling, still working. So he's almost 80 years old now, still having to work. So that's the reality of it. You know, it, you know, you can make a lot of money, yeah, but if you spend it wisely and, you know, invest it, uh, don't blow it all, uh, you're going to be in a lot better shape. I mean, welders can make as much as doctors can. It's just, you know, we're, uh, we're, we have to travel, so you just don't want to lock yourself in a position where you have to be gone all the time is basically what I'm trying to say. You know, spend it wisely. Don't, don't, don't rack yourself up with bills and everything, and you're going to be okay because you'll make plenty of money. Don't worry. But, yeah, I, that would be my advice. So hopefully you guys like this video. We'll be putting out more videos on our YouTube channel, so subscribe to that. And also, check out our website. We have links, and we also have shop for clothing and a virtual tour. Until next time, see you there.